The Chupacabra has been spotted again in Texas, and the Loch Ness Monster has moved to North Carolina. Here are some of the craziest creatures you won't believe that people have actually seen. Maybe you have too! The Cthulhu Creature Cthulhu might be real after all. This giant squid bigger than a man shocked fishermen. A fisherman in New Zealand had his picture taken lying alongside a creature that can only be compared to the legendary Kraken. Or maybe Cthulhu. This wasn't a mythical being, though. It was a real animal that lives in the sea. The fisherman found a squid bigger than a man. So, of course, he had to lay down next to it for proof that he and his crew had pulled out a practically mythological creature from the ocean. The giant squid was massive, measuring roughly 12 feet long. It was about twice the size of the fisherman who laid down next to it for his photo shoot. According to what he wrote online, the deep-sea tentacled monster got caught in one of their nets. It took ages to get it out, and it was a slimy job. The fishermen had to draw straws to see who would go into the net and attach the squid to the crane. Then they lifted the monster out and placed it on the deck. But sadly, the giant squid died while struggling in the net, so the fishermen failed to save it. Although the squid was humongous by every metric, it wasn't even as big as it could have been. Giant squid are known to grow over 40 feet long in some cases. These are the real sea monsters of the world's oceans. And yet they are so elusive that catching one in a fishing net is a very rare occurrence. And now for number 8. But first, I want to give a big shout out to Reindeer Crossing and Margaret Slezak. Thanks so much for watching and supporting Origins Explained. We wouldn't be here without you. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe and join the family. The Alton Monster In downtown Alton in Illinois, a woman recently encountered a tall, dark, and very large creature. It had a human face and was completely white, but it was anything but human. The woman who encountered this beast said its eyes glowed and it had scary wings on its back. She said that she saw it late at night. Apparently, her dog growled at it, causing it to fly away. When the woman came forward with her story, she expected to be ridiculed. Instead, she learned that people have been seeing a similar creature in this Illinois city for centuries. It's called the Piazza Bird, and it's existed since the earliest days of Native American myth. In 1673, two murals were discovered on some cliffs above the Mississippi River. The murals were painted by Native Americans long before European explorers ever arrived in North America. They may have been about 1,000 years old, maybe even older, but sadly, the images were destroyed, and all that remain today are painted recreations based on sketches from the 19th century. The murals depict a bird-like monster with a human face, a creature that looks just like what the woman saw recently in downtown Alton. Nobody knows if the Piazza bird is real, but people have definitely been witnessing something strange in the area for a long time. Some have connected it to the Mothman, that horrendous beast that appeared in West Virginia in 1966. But others have connected it to the Thunderbird, another legendary creature from Native American myths. A more modern theory is that the creature is a restless spirit, which is occasionally witnessed in the form of a human-bird hybrid. The Loch Ness Monster of North Carolina a strange, snake-like creature was recently spotted in North Carolina, and there is now a rumor going around that the Loch Ness Monster has moved to America. But if it's not the real monster, it could be something related to the Scottish creature. The bizarre footage surfaced in early 2023. In the video, you can see a humongous animal briefly stick its head out of the water just off the coast of Atlantic Beach. A piece of its body breached the surface, just for a second though. Then the monster disappeared back under the water and nobody has seen it since. This is an interesting case because there is a video and there were witnesses. It's a lot easier to believe a monster exists when people saw it with their own eyes and when there's video evidence. Those who were there agreed the creature looked a lot like the mythical monster from Scotland's Loch Ness but others said it looked more like a baby whale or an alligator. The Texas Chupacabra Texans in Hill Country Village were left stunned after a chupacabra showed up in somebody's backyard. This strange creature was so baffling that even animal experts don't have a clue what it might have been. The abnormal animal appeared in the small Texas city in the summer of 2023, and it was witnessed by Tina Kallig. 
Tina looked out her window and saw a yellowish-brown beast with four legs moving through her backyard. It looked to be about the size of a big dog, only it clearly wasn't a canine. It had a very long tail that almost touched the ground, plus its ears were all wrong. They were too big and pricked, not anything like ordinary dog ears. Tina quickly snapped a photo of the creature, then she watched it walk around her yard for a minute as it snacked on some berries before vanishing into the bushes. Tina had never seen such a thing before. She posted the picture to social media, hoping that someone might be able to identify it. And surprisingly, most people agreed that it was likely a chupacabra. Rachel Malsta from the San Antonio Zoo guessed that the animal may have been a dog or a coyote. Two veterinarians at the zoo also said it might be a dog, though it must have been afflicted by some serious skin issues. The game wardens didn't even comment on the strange sighting. It's far more exciting to think it was a chupacabra, the legendary monster of the Americas that's said to slurp blood from dead goats. But in reality, there's a good chance it was a mountain lion. There is a local legend in Hill Country Village of a rogue mountain lion, but nobody's ever documented it until now. What do you think? Let me know in the comments! Cocaine Sharks Scientists have been witnessing erratic behavior in some sharks off the coast of Florida, and a new study has suggested it's because the sharks are on cocaine. Forget about Cocaine Bear, there are real-life cocaine sharks. It sounds like the title for the next ridiculous disaster movie, but this is the reality we're all living in. Scientists have been monitoring crazed sharks they think are feasting on bales of drugs. The bales are being dumped by passing traffickers and then ripped open by the predators of the deep. But sharks aren't the only marine creatures getting high on the supply. Studies have recently shown that other fish are being affected by drugs as well. Dr. Tracy Fanara says that fish are affected by drugs that leak into the water, especially methamphetamines and pharmaceuticals. Although it's unlikely that sharks are purposely going after bales of cocaine, they could be ingesting it accidentally like other fish. Cocaine is an extremely soluble material. When the bales get dumped in the water and the packages rip a tiny bit, the drugs seep into the environment. So when sharks swim by, the cocaine floods into their bloodstream, making them go absolutely nuts. This isn't just a theory either. It's been seen in action! Tracy Fanara conducted six days of research in the Florida Keys. Along with a team of international scientists, Tracy witnessed hammerhead sharks, which normally avoid humans, swimming directly at divers. Other sharks were seen moving erratically, and some were even swimming in circles. Scientists said it looked like they were chasing imaginary objects. To get to the bottom of the mystery, scientists dumped bales of concentrated fish powder into the water. The powder was designed to simulate the effect of cocaine on sharks. Researchers said the effect was like feeding catnip to cats. It hotwired the brains of the sharks and made them go crazy. The bottom line is that if you're going to be swimming off the coast of Florida, be aware that the sharks could potentially be on cocaine and be more aggressive than usual. The Ibu Gogo In the ancient mythology of Flores Island in Indonesia, there is a creature called Ibu Gogo. In the local Naje language, Ibu means grandmother and Gogo means he who eats anything. So the monster's name roughly translates to the grandmother who eats everything. Although legendary, scientists recently figured out that the creature likely existed and could still be hiding in the jungle. Ibu Gogo is said to be about four feet tall and is able to walk just like an ordinary person. There isn't just one monster, but rather a whole race of them. They have wide, flat noses and hairy bodies. And for centuries, the indigenous population on the island feared the creatures. They believe the Ibu Gogo dwell in the deepest parts of the blackest jungles. And when the locals encountered one such creature and spoke to them, the creatures would sometimes repeat what was said in the same way a parrot does. For years, the legends have been attributed to monkeys. But that's likely not the case. Archaeologists discovered evidence of an ancient species of human that lived on the island of Flores between 13,000 and 54,000 years ago. The unique human species is named Homo floresiensis, and they live to be just shy of four feet tall. The description of the human species matches perfectly with the description of the Ibu Gogo. 
Natives of the island weren't witnessing strange creatures. They were seeing an entirely different species of human, one that scientists only recently discovered. They still argue that all Homo floresiensis were dead long before any other people lived on the island of Flores. To be frank, the scientists are probably wrong. The official timeline doesn't make sense because there were sightings when Portuguese trading ships arrived in the 17th century. The truth is that real-life hobbits likely lived on the island as recently as the 20th century. They weren't just monkeys or myths, they were real prehistoric humans. It's the equivalent of learning that Bigfoot is a Neanderthal. Morgauer In 2020, Dan Matthew and George Vinnicombe spotted an unusual sea creature off the coast of Cornwall in England. It had a huge black body and a long neck. As soon as the experienced sailors approached the creature on their ship, it ducked underwater and vanished. George recognized it right away because he'd seen it 50 years earlier in 1970. It's one of the most elusive sea monsters that almost definitely exists. The English call it Morgauer, though it has many names. It's been called the Cornish Sea Serpent and the Cornwall Plesiosaur. It's likely not the only creature of its kind because fishermen and sailors have been encountering it for centuries. In 1876, the Royal Cornwall Gazette published an account of two fishermen who witnessed the sea serpent. It was unlike anything they'd ever seen before, but because it was coiled around the floating mark of their crab pot, the fishermen bashed it on the head and sent it away. Morgaur has been seen countless times since. Some say it's about 30 feet long, resembling an oarfish. Only it's not an oarfish because it has the fat body of a prehistoric plesiosaur. Oarfish are more thin like a snake or an eel. George Vinnicombe has seen it twice in his lifetime, enough for him to be convinced it's real. But because the creature has never been caught, there is no way to 100% confirm its existence. The Furry Felon in Arizona, multiple sightings of a strange creature sent authorities on the hunt for an animal they never expected to find. Authorities figured they were hunting for a raccoon that was bothering townsfolk, but instead, they found a creature from the jungles of Central and South America. It started with a concerned citizen. The citizen called the Prescott Valley Police Department because of an animal he couldn't identify trespassing on his roof. The trespasser turned out to be a Kuwati Mundi. Animal control supervisor Tim Yogurst arrived on scene and apprehended the furry little creature. The reason it looks like a raccoon is because it's part of the raccoon family. Some people call it a Mexican raccoon because that's where they live. The big difference between Kuwati Mundi and raccoons is that the former has a much longer nose and can grow about two feet long. Unbeknownst to many people in Arizona, these creatures do live in the state. They aren't seen very often, but they pop up now and again across the southwestern United States. They don't typically carry rabies, but they are closely related to raccoons and can be vicious. Animal experts say that if you see one, just leave it alone. The Chinese Lake Monster In China, a tourist captured a video of a positively humongous sea monster, and the creature might be the mysterious resident of a place called Heavenly Lake. The video was captured by a woman identified only as Miss Lee from Shanghai. She was visiting Lake Tianqi in the Xinjiang region in August of 2023. During a leisurely stroll, she caught sight of something unusual breaching the water's surface. It was about 4 o'clock p.m., and the sighting was accompanied by a loud gush like a fish flopping out of the water. In the distance, about 600 feet away, was a true leviathan. Miss Lee estimated the creature's length at 50 feet. Even if she was exaggerating a little, it was still an obviously massive animal. You can watch the video and draw your own conclusions. The cell phone footage isn't the best, but it does show something disrupting the lake. You can see waves and ripples emanating from where a large mass seems to be lurking just beneath the surface. The creature didn't stick around for long, though. After 10 seconds, the ripples stopped, and the lake became perfectly still. It was as if the creature had never been there. Miss Lee showed her video to staff at the lake to get their thoughts. Staff said they couldn't make much of it because of the poor quality. However, they also admitted that other tourists have experienced similar sightings. Enough people have seen the sea monster of Heavenly Lake to suggest that there is a marine behemoth somewhere at the bottom. While there's not necessarily proof, 
It's important to note that nothing in the lake grows more than three feet long. At least, nothing scientists know about. There are decent-sized rainbow trout. They are the biggest living things in the lake, but not nearly big enough to be confused with a sea monster. Thanks for watching. Be sure to stay tuned for extra content you might have missed. The Livonian Werewolf The legend of the werewolf has its roots in true history, and the Livonian werewolf was one of the original werewolves that plagued Europe, at least according to some. This story goes back to 1692, when a man was put on trial in Swedish Livonia. At the time, this man was in his 80s. He admitted to being a werewolf, telling his fellow villagers that he had ventured into hell to do battle with the devil after shedding his human skin and turning into a wolf. The judges didn't know what to think about that, so they deemed him guilty of being a heretic and trying to turn people away from Christianity. The poor old man was flogged and then banished from his village for the rest of his life. This man was named Tis of Kaltenbrunn. When the judge pressed him about how exactly he turned into a werewolf, he claimed that along with his other werewolf friends, they would scurry into the bushes get naked, and then transform from their human bodies into their wolf bodies. They did this on St. Lucia's Day, the night of the Pentecost, and on St. John's Day. It's difficult to say all these years later if anyone actually saw Tis turn into a werewolf. The villagers were convinced of his supernatural abilities, but experts today say this was all a bunch of nonsense. Instead, historical experts believe Tis was not a physical werewolf but one of the last remaining practitioners of folk magic in Europe. Giant Creature Skull The giant skull of a mysterious monster recently washed up on a New Jersey beach. The enormous cranium was found by residents at Island Beach State Park, looking like the oversized skull of some kind of bird with a really pointy beak. Initially, officials were left clueless as to what kind of strange being the skull belonged to. It was too large to be any kind of terrestrial mammal, it definitely didn't belong to a shark, and people online even started suggesting it was the skull of a pterodactyl. It was completely smooth without a single scrap of flesh on it, but according to the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the bones actually belonged to a mink whale. Specifically, they were the upper jaw and the skull of the whale. Where the rest of the whale's body is, nobody has a clue. The whale must have been dead for quite some time for all the flesh to be stripped from its bones. Somehow, only its skull ended up washing ashore and being pushed by the waves all the way up to the beach access walking path. Regardless, it probably would make for a great souvenir. If you could somehow deodorize it and get rid of the fish smell, then you could tell people that you found a pterodactyl on the beach. The Susquehanna Seal These days, the Susquehanna Greenway is a place for hiking, paddling, and weekend adventures. But in the deep past, this part of Pennsylvania was haunted by a creature known by several names. Some have called it the Kettle Creek Monster, others refer to it as the West Branch Dugong, but most people know it simply as the Susquehanna Seal. According to a local article from February of 1897, this mysterious Pennsylvanian monster existed in the area even before the valley was settled. It had made its way up the river and stayed in the region between Lock Haven and Kettle Creek. It was described by people who witnessed the horrifying thing as a sea monster the size of an ox or a hippopotamus, but unlike anything else on the planet. In the night, it could be heard howling in the water and thrashing as if in agony. The creature was blamed in the early 1900s for spilling and capsizing lumber rafts. After a couple decades, stories of the Susquehanna seal became less and less frequent. Locals began to wonder if the creature hadn't died or escaped back to the ocean through a secret underground cavern. Whatever the case, the monster hasn't been seen in almost 100 years. To this day, nobody knows what it really was. It could have been an extra-large seal or a prehistoric monster. Sadly, we'll probably never know. Mutant Diamondback An extremely rare diamondback rattlesnake was just spotted in Florida. A researcher discovered what he described as a rare mutant rattlesnake with an unusual pattern. As scientists have already discovered, eastern diamondback rattlesnakes have brown, tan, or yellow skin, which is covered in brown diamonds with cream outlines. But Pearson Hill, a local biologist, came across a diamondback with no diamonds. 
It was completely void of any kind of pattern, making it one of the rarest diamondbacks ever spotted. These types of rattlesnakes are huge and venomous, growing up to 6 feet long and weighing 10 pounds. They actually hold the title for being the longest and heaviest venomous snakes found today in North America. In the summer, they hide in vegetation and wait to ambush victims. In the winter, they hide in tortoise burrows or tree stumps and wait for the summer. This one was found loitering in the grass, very clearly a rattlesnake but without a single diamond on its back. Pearson Hill captured the serpent and put a microchip in it. That way it can be identified by other scientists in the future. As for how it got this weird mutation, the biologist says that both parents probably had a recessive gene variant that resulted in this mutant snake. Luckily for the snake, this weird mutation probably won't stop it from being able to catch prey. Let's just hope that nobody finds it in the bush and mistakes it for a non-venomous snake because of its lack of diamonds. The Chupacabra A man in Texas spotted a strange creature wandering around a suburban neighborhood. He managed to catch the creature on camera, strolling around like some kind of four-legged goblin. The man who got the footage of the beast says it's the chupacabra. According to the unidentified man, he took photos of the creature near Highway 6 in Houston. It had an uncanny resemblance to the mythical creature that has been allegedly terrorizing communities throughout Puerto Rico, Mexico, and the United States for decades, if not centuries. The chupacabra is described as looking kind of like a small bear or a rabid dog, with rows of spines sticking out of its neck and an insatiable thirst for blood. Its name literally translates to goat sucker because legends of the creature arose when a mysterious animal started sucking the blood out of farmers' goats and leaving their bodies all shriveled up. Professional biologists were quick to dismiss these photographs as nothing but a dog suffering from some kind of disorder, possibly mange. They also say it could have been a sick coyote. The creature hasn't been seen again, so there is no real way of knowing if it really was the chupacabra. Do you think the chupacabra is real or just another urban legend? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. I wanted to give a big shout out to Chad Smith and Lori Carter. Thanks so much for supporting Origins Explained. Big Black Cat In Christian County, Missouri, things can get pretty untamed out in the backcountry. It's not that unusual to spot animals like deer, coyotes, and raccoons. But Stephanie Wigger recently told her local news station that what she saw did not resemble any of the normal woodland animals that live in the region. She says that what she saw was a huge black cat crossing the road, something that looked like a legitimate panther from the Amazon jungle. And according to Stephanie, it wasn't the first time she'd seen the animal. She's seen it at least a dozen times and has estimated the massive feline to be over 100 pounds. Her neighbor has seen the animal, her friends in town have seen it, and the Missouri Department of Conservation has even gotten involved. Francis Scaliki with the Conservation Department has been trying to warn residents to get in contact with them whenever they see a mysterious big cat in the woods. They have protocols that they can follow to help track down and get to the bottom of the mystery. But even though Francis has said this, nobody has figured out what kind of animal is terrorizing the county. Residents have reported dozens of cats and dogs going missing. Almost everyone has seen the giant cat, and there is still no clue as to its origin. We don't know if it's an escaped animal from the zoo or some kind of rampaging monster let loose from the swamps. Lake Champlain's Monster the first sighting of the mysterious Lake Champlain water monster goes back to 1609. And since then, there have been hundreds of sightings of America's very own elusive sea monster. Folks who know about the Lake Champlain monster have likened it to the Loch Ness monster from Scotland. And just like the more famous Nessie, there is absolutely no proof or physical evidence that the Lake Champlain monster exists. All we have are hundreds and hundreds of eyewitness accounts and some blurry photographs. The very first person who ever saw the monster is Samuel de Champlain, the famous French cartographer who discovered Quebec. He described the creature as a sea serpent over 20 feet long, with its body as thick as a barrel and its head like that of a horse. But through the years, the descriptions of the monster have changed. Several centuries later, in 1819, a sea captain allegedly witnessed a serpentine monster in Lake Champlain over 187 feet long. 
He claimed the monster had three teeth, eyes colored like onions, and a red necklace. In modern times, sightings of the beast have gotten a little less frequent. People still sometimes claim to see something mysterious slithering underneath the water of Lake Champlain. But just like the famous Loch Ness Monster, nobody, no matter how hard they look, has managed to get a proper photograph of it. Flying Dinosaurs in North Carolina In North Carolina, there are a number of mysterious creatures you might encounter, including Bigfoot, the Lake Norman Monster, or even a lizard man. But in recent days, people in North Carolina have been witnessing flying dinosaurs. At least that's what they say. Many residents now believe that flying dinosaurs are somehow hiding out in the North Carolina woods. They say that the flying monsters are long forgotten pterosaurs from the days when dinosaurs roamed the earth. This is despite all the scientific evidence we have today that every last dinosaur went extinct 66 million years ago. According to Jonathan Whitcomb, cryptozoologist and author of the book Modern Pterosaurs, there are indeed flying dinosaurs living in North Carolina. And while he might be dismissed as a crazy person, there have been quite a few sightings of them recently. A woman named Cynthia Lee, while studying to be a veterinary technician, saw a flying creature with no feathers and a long tail soaring above her head while she was taking an Uber to work. But oddly enough, the driver did not see it. And coincidentally, her mother and uncle have also seen flying dinosaurs in the past. As much as you might want to chalk this up to a family of delusional crazy people, there have been other witnesses. A man in Charlotte saw something that he described as a dragon. Then a lady in Asheville saw a winged creature fly low over her car. And finally in Jacksonville, an eyewitness saw something with smooth skin and no feathers flying overhead. Basically, no matter where you go in North Carolina, people seem to be seeing dinosaurs in the sky. Woods Ape In Colorado, Bigfoot has been spotted no less than 100 times in the last couple of years. One of the more notable sightings occurred in Summit County in broad daylight. It was summer 2019, and a hiker was climbing through the area of Mayflower Gulch when they stopped to take a break. Above them, at around 11,000 feet of elevation, he saw a massive creature much bigger than a person and a lot closer to an ape. It appeared to be climbing up a wall of snow, or at least it was trying to. The creature kept falling down, and it eventually gave up and vanished from sight. The hiker went with two others in his party to search the area where he had seen the creature. They found strange prints in the snow, which they managed to photograph and send to the Bigfoot Field Research Organization. But when they tried to follow the footprints, they disappeared, and the monster was lost. The Bigfoot organization labeled this as a Class A sighting, what they believe to be real evidence of a Bigfoot-type creature, some kind of woods ape living in Colorado. The Dover Demon It was April 21, 1977, when the Dover Demon was first witnessed in Massachusetts. The witness in this case was William Bartlett, just 17 years old. He claimed that as he was driving home, he witnessed a creature with massive eyes and fingers like tendrils. It was perched on a broken stone wall in the town of Dover. He only got a brief look at it because he was driving, but there was no mistaking the demonic creature lurking on the side of the road. If it had only been William who saw the monster, it never would have made it into the local folklore of today. But after he came forward with what he saw, more people started to admit that they, too, had seen a similar creature. On April 22nd, the day after, another person saw the demon on Springdale Avenue. A handful of other eyewitnesses came forward, and after each of them detailed where they saw the demon, it turned out that all the sightings were in a straight line, over a distance of two miles. But after April 22nd, the creature was never seen again. To this day, we don't know what the Dover Demon was. Some claim it was a lost alien, trying to find its way back to its ship. Mermaid Ever since the first people ventured out into the oceans on boats, legends of mermaids have been told, either as benevolent beings who rescued lost sailors during terrible storms, or as the evil harbingers of doom themselves. 
With so much of the world's ocean still unexplored, it's impossible to say that they don't actually exist, I guess, and supposed sightings of them are still quite common. In 2009, the town of Kiryat Yam in Israel became the center of attention when people started seeing a mermaid swimming just off the coast during sunset. Said to resemble a cross between a young girl and a fish, she would perform a few tricks in front of onlookers before returning to the depths. The sightings went on for several months and even led to a $1 million reward being offered by local officials to the first person who managed to capture definitive proof of her. The reward has never been claimed, and the only evidence that this mermaid was real is from eyewitness accounts. It's not easy to capture a mermaid on camera. The Yeti the Yeti is said to be an ape-like creature that roams the peaks of the Himalayan mountains and has been a part of local folklore for hundreds of years. In 1951, British explorer Eric Shipton was looking for a new route up Mount Everest when he came upon a footprint in the snow. It looked sort of like a human foot, but much bigger. He took a picture and the local legend of the Yeti became famous all over the world. The footprint measured between 12 to 13 inches long, and the images sparked a debate as to whether this humanoid creature in the Himalayas really existed. Last year, 2019, the Indian Army tweeted pictures of what they believed to be Yeti tracks that had been found in the snow near the Makalu base camp. At an altitude of more than 17,000 feet, there are very few animal species that live in the area, let alone ones that are large enough to make prints like these. So surely the only explanation is that the abominable snowmen had recently walked by. They were apparently massive, measuring 32 inches long and 15 inches wide, and so far no one has been able to suggest any alternative explanation for how they got there. Some have made comments that perhaps it was the Indian army that faked the images, but they surely wouldn't have done that for some fame on Twitter, would they? The Kraken for hundreds of years, sailors around the world have spoken of gigantic beasts of the deep that were responsible for countless shipwrecks and lost souls. Even today, there are many mysterious creatures still being discovered, so imagine a long time ago. These tales were taken so seriously that most landlubbers accepted them as fact. Look at any maps from the 17th and 18th centuries and they'll almost always have depictions of what we see as monsters on them, with the most common one being the Kraken. But was the Kraken pure legend or was there an element of truth to the story of a colossal, octopus-type creature? Images and videos have recently been shared that suggest there are indeed creatures like this that still live in the oceans. You probably have guessed what it is. In 2013, researchers managed to capture the first recording of a giant squid swimming at depths of more than 2,000 feet, and they most certainly fit the bill. Growing to up to 43 feet long, they would be able to wrap their tentacles around a small ship, and quite possibly could have been able to capsize it. As we learn more about these giants of the deep, it's becoming increasingly likely that the legendary kraken could be real after all. Unicorn Unicorns are legendary creatures that are mentioned in a variety of cultures around the world, but recent discoveries suggest that they may in fact have once actually existed, although their image has been transformed over millennia. The Siberian unicorn, or Elasmotherium sibiricum, was a large rhinoceros, the size of a mammoth, that went extinct around 29,000 years ago. They were covered in thick, dark fur to survive the cold environment and had a huge horn protruding from their foreheads. A fossil was recently found in Kazakhstan that proved they were alive much more recently than had been previously thought. This means that they may have lived among modern humans. People from China and Eastern Europe had stories and legends of a beast with a single horn. Ballads that told stories were passed down among the Yakut tribes, the Chinese, Europeans and Arabs, and Persians. The one-horned beast appeared in religious texts taking a more symbolic meaning. Regardless, some researchers are investigating the possibility of using recovered DNA to one day bring Elasmotherium back to life. Would you like to see that? Let me know in the comments below. U-28 Creature World War I was the first war that saw the widespread use of modern weaponry, including submarine warfare. The German Empire concentrated its efforts to disrupt Allied shipping by using submarines. One of them, the German SM U-28, attacked the SS Iberian, a British merchant steamer, in 1915. It was headed from Manchester, England to Boston, Massachusetts when it was hit by a torpedo off the coast of Ireland. While this will not really go down in history as a famous naval battle, there is something else that it is remembered for. The Iberian sunk with a large explosion. 
The captain of the sub, George von Forstner, reported seeing something very unusual. At that moment, as the ship exploded, a giant sea creature was blown out of the water to a height of about eight feet. He and six other officers all saw it writhing and struggling in the debris. They all agreed it looked like a massive crocodile. He reported it was so huge it must have been about 60 feet long with a crocodile shape. He claimed to have seen it for 10 to 15 seconds at a distance of about 150 to 100 meters in bright sunshine. Von Forstner was an accomplished submarine commander and survived the war, although sadly the other crew members didn't make it. His account is believed to be credible. Now the U-28 creature, as it's called, is compared to other sea serpents, and some believe the creature was actually a prehistoric reptile such as a Pliosaurus or a Mosasaurus, perhaps a Thalatosuchia. Did the crew of the submarine see an ancient crocodile? It's very hard to say. Vampire Remains Vampires have been mentioned in European folklore for many centuries and are described as mysterious creatures of the night that suck the life force from humans. And while it's easy to dismiss them as fictitious entities, people believed that they were real. If they do exist, they are likely to be far more human than the stories would suggest and could even be walking among us today. In 2009, anthropologists were investigating a plague pit in Venice when they made a gruesome discovery. During the time of the plague in the 16th century, some believe that vampires were responsible for the spread of the disease. Grave diggers had exposed burial sites and found bodies that were still growing hair and were bleeding from the mouth, so they thought that these remains were still alive. The shrouds used to cover the faces of the deceased would decay from the bacteria in the mouth, revealing the teeth. In this pit, the historians found the remains of what appears to have been a female vampire who was ceremoniously killed by the locals. She had a brick wedged into her mouth to prevent her from being able to feed on anyone. This may be the first vampire burial known in archaeology, sparking a debate on whether gravediggers were purposefully trying to exterminate the vampire or whether this is a case of a brick simply falling into a skull's mouth. The researchers from the site are adamant that this fascinating find is real, but that other colleagues are jealous of their find and their success, seeing as they were in a National Geographic documentary. Bigfoot Bigfoot is the most sought-after and investigated legendary creature in the world. With so many TV shows, research grants, and camping trips dedicated to finding the mysterious being, you'd have thought that we'd have seen proof of it by now, but it has managed to remain elusive. Occasionally, some footage does get captured that seriously makes you wonder whether you're actually truly looking at the real deal, however, like this video that was recorded by two hikers as they trekked through the Salt Fork State Park in eastern Ohio. They had heard some strange noises coming from behind them, and when they turned around to take a look, they spotted a strange figure moving between the trees in the distance. It appears to be covered in fur about six or seven feet tall and is moving cautiously through the undergrowth. It's certainly nothing like any of the known animals in the region. So could it be Bigfoot? Werewolf There's something about a full moon that brings out the strange in everyone and everything. People start acting weird, and animals, confused by the bright light in the night sky, may even start behaving like they would during the day. But could it also be true that once a month there are people that turn into wolves? There are countless legends of such creatures born from a curse that dooms them to a transformation based on the lunar cycle, but tangible evidence is hard to find. This may have changed in 2018, however, when a rancher from Montana saw a strange creature prowling on his property and did what any self-respecting farmer would. He shot it dead. When he approached the carcass, it wasn't clear what this animal was. The claws were oversized, and it had a huge head, but its legs were too short to be one of the local wolf or dog species. Add to that the strangely shaped ears and the unusual coat of fur, and people have become convinced that this is either a werewolf or a dire wolf which itself is a species that's thought to be long extinct. The Chupacabra The Chupacabra, whose name translates to mean the goat sucker, is a legendary creature from South America that's said to prowl at night in search of animals that it can drain the blood from. It's long been blamed for the death of livestock and attacking people too, but it's also a surprisingly recently told myth, with its origins seeming to stem from several incidents that happened in the 90s. This doesn't mean that it doesn't actually exist, and there are numerous mentions in ancient writings that talk of a demonic creature very similar to the chupacabra. They may not be confined to South America either, and in 2019 an image was caught of a possible suspect in Texas. It definitely seems to fit the descriptions of the chupacabra, which is a dog-like creature with spines along its back that it can extend when it's hunting or in danger, and it disappeared soon after the eyewitness managed to capture the image. 
People in the community have been keeping a watch out ever since, but so far there have been no reports of goats or any other creatures that have been mysteriously attacked. The Jersey Devil If you visit New Jersey, I don't think the first thing on your mind would be strange and unusual creatures, but for more than two centuries, it's been home to a legend of an actual monster, a winged creature known as the Jersey Devil. There are countless records of sightings, newspaper articles dating back to the 19th century that talk about it, and images of supposed sightings, and it's one of the best documented cryptids in the world. Believed to live in the Pine Barrens in South Jersey, it is described as having a goat's head, large bat-like wings, horns, small arms, and clawed hands like a T-Rex, and a forked tail like the devil. Recently in 2019, a man was driving through the state and saw what he initially thought was a llama, but it then opened its wings and flew up to a perch in a nearby tree. He took a photo as evidence and it reawakened the legend, with flocks of people visiting the area for their own chance at seeing the beast. Was this an actual sighting of the Jersey Devil, or was it something else entirely? We may never know for sure, but perhaps one day we'll get definitive proof that it does truly exist. That might not be a great thing. The Loch Ness Monster The Loch Ness Monster is undoubtedly the most famous mythical creature in the world, and its possible existence has inspired countless monster hunters to try and get a glimpse of it for themselves. While many write the stories off as an ingenious marketing ploy to attract tourists to the lake, there are still many who are convinced that the beast is real. Images and sightings have been recorded since the 1800s, but while you might have thought it's becoming less common now, Nessie fever is greater than ever. Sightings are so frequent that in 1983, the official Loch Ness Monster sightings register was established to keep track of all of the encounters, and according to its records, 2019 was the year with the most sightings ever. In total, they logged 18 events, which ranged from accounts by people in the area and even those watching a live stream on webcam from home. The excitement was possibly spurred on by one of the biggest scientific explorations of the loch that has ever been conducted, which in 2019 suggested the monster could in fact be a giant eel, after finding huge levels of eel DNA in the water. Whatever you believe, there is no doubt that something strange is going on in that lock, but quite what the truth really is, we can't know for sure. The Flatwoods Monster On September 12, 1952, an odd event happened in West Virginia that is still unexplained to this day. A fireball was seen in the sky, but unlike regular meteors and comets and such, this fireball was seen all across the United States. There were sightings of it from coast to coast. Edward and Fred May, who were in West Virginia, saw the fireball in the sky and then realized that it crashed on a nearby farm. Along with their friend, their mother, and a neighbor, they went to go and observe the crash site. When they did arrive, the area was covered in an odd mist, and a metallic sound of sorts was filling the air. As they tried to get closer to figure out what was going on, they saw a pair of red eyes looking at them through the mist. It was then that they saw the creature in its full form. The creature that was looking at them was 10 feet tall and had a glowing green body. Body. The creature hissed at them and started to approach, so they all ran. Obviously, they told whoever they could about the event, and the people went out to look for it, but they found nothing. Yet a reporter found some odd skid marks near where the crash was, and also found an odd gooey deposit. The mystery was never truly solved. The people who saw the creature stuck to their story, and again, the red fireball was indeed spotted all across the United States. So were they just lying? And what did they have to gain if they were? Interestingly enough, this encounter was so famous that it was featured in an episode of the History Channel series Project Blue Book, where the explanation of the monster was a mix of gas, hallucinations, and an owl perched outstretched on a tree. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Kuryat Yam's Mermaids In terms of cryptids, the mermaid is one of the most legendary mythical creatures said to be out there. Many sailors claim to have seen them, including Christopher Columbus, but apparently there have been modern appearances by these creatures as well, such as in 2009 in Kuryat Yam, Israel. This all started when one of the people of Kuryat Yam went to the beach and saw the mermaid. Apparently, she was sunbathing, relaxing on a rock. Once she was spotted, the mermaid went into the waters and disappeared. But the sightings didn't stop there. In fact, they just started. More and more locals came to the spot, and around dusk, the mermaid would occasionally appear, helping fuel mermaid fever. 
This fever got so crazy that the town council of Kuryat Yam offered a million dollar reward to anyone who could get definitive proof that the mermaid existed. Sadly, and somewhat expectedly, no proof was ever found and the legend continues. So was this just a hoax to stir up the town, or was this really a frequent sighting? It's hard to say for sure, but regardless of what you believe, there are people in the world today still hunting for definitive proof of mermaids. The Jersey Devil According to legend, there was a woman named Jane Mother Leeds who had many children during her life. But one night, she was giving birth to what would be her 13th child, and when it was being born, she uttered the words, let this one be the devil. If you believe the story, that wish came true. For after being born, it grew horny horns, wings, and a tail. It flew up into the chimney of her house and went out into the world. So goes the legend of the Jersey Devil. The Jersey Devil is said to live in the Pine Barrens of southern New Jersey, hence the name of the beast. And throughout its lifetime, it's been one cryptid who has been spotted by many people over many years. The first sighting of the creature came in 1812, when Joseph Bonaparte, the older brother to Napoleon Bonaparte, said he saw the creature near his New Jersey estate. In 1909, the legend grew to new heights. Over 1,000 sightings of the Jersey Devil came that year, including from some cannon soldiers who saw the creature, shot it, hit it and said it still lived since it didn't drop dead from the shot. Fueled by this and the finding of some tracks that didn't match creatures of the area, bloodhounds were brought in to try and find the creature, but the bloodhounds apparently refused to follow the tracks. More and more sightings have followed, even some coming as late as 2015. Some even claim to have taken videos or pictures of the creature. Have you ever heard of this before? Anyone seen the Jersey Devil? Let us know in the comments below. The objects over Washington, D.C. While aliens aren't technically cryptids, there are many who view them as legendary monsters. And just like monsters, any sightings of aliens are sure to cause a panic, especially when the event itself comes out of nowhere, and there's still no true explanation as to what happened. That's likely what certain air traffic controllers were feeling in 1952 when their radar started picking up something they couldn't explain. In Washington, D.C., at Ronald Reagan National Airport, some air traffic controllers started noticing aircraft on their radar that shouldn't have been there. What's more, some of them were moving at such speeds that they were actually confusing the radar itself. Fast forward a week and a bunch of people from all walks of life, including military personnel, started reporting things whizzing by in the sky that they couldn't recognize. These reports spread around and people flew into a panic to the extent that a massive press conference had to be called to calm everyone down. It was actually the biggest one since World War II, which shows just how frightened people were. What's more, over the course of the next few days, the story of what happened was edited and changed based on where the story was being shown to help quell the panic that it started. On the History Channel series Project Blue Book, if you missed that episode, they showed the events of that period and it was one of the episodes where the explanation was meant to be open-ended, because no one could truly say what happened that day. U-28 Crocodile in World War I, there was a British steamer known as the Iberian. It was going through waters next to Ireland when it came under attack by a German U-28 submarine. A battle commenced, and despite the Iberian fleeing with all she had, the submarine won in the end. But that doesn't end this particular story. The captain of the submarine, Baron von Forstner, went to the periscope to watch the Iberian sink. When he did, he saw something he couldn't explain. Soon after the Iberian fully sank, there was an explosion. It was likely the Iberian's internals giving out and causing the blast. But whatever caused it, Forstner claimed that he saw a massive sea crocodile thrown into the air. So certain was he of this that he wrote an article about it in a German newspaper in 1933 and said the following. The animal was about 20 meters long and crocodile-like in shape, with pairs of strong front and hind legs adapted for swimming and a long head that tapered towards the nose. He claimed to have seen it for 10 to 15 seconds at a distance of about 150 to 100 meters in bright sunshine. Usually, reports like this are dismissed due to a lack of details, but Forstner was very specific. He gave measurements, noted that it was bright outside, gave key details about the monster's shape, and more. Plus, after just securing a victory for Germany, he had no reason to lie about this. Why talk about monsters when you just sank a British ship? Further adding to the mystery is that six other crew members claim to have seen the creature, and certain credited scientists believe he honestly did see it. And one zoologist, Bernard Hubelmans, felt the description matched up with a prehistoric giant crocodile that could possibly still be living today, called the Thalatosuchia. Is that really what he saw? Why was the crocodile right near the surface of the ocean during the fight? And are there more of these out there? We may never know. The Kraken 
The Kraken is a legend that continues to thrive around the world despite many people believing that it is just an exaggeration of a now-known creature, the giant squid. According to legends, the Kraken is a squid of such size that it would dwarf and consume massive vessels. But despite the story being born in the time of sailboats, there have been many modern-day accounts of the Kraken, including some in World War II. A British trawler was docked off of the Maldives, and a crewman, A.G. Starkey, was on the deck of the trawler when he thought he saw something in the water. He said, as I gazed, fascinated, a circle of green light glowed in my area of illumination. This green, unwinking orb, I suddenly realized, was an eye. The surface of the water undulated with some strange disturbance. Gradually, I realized that I was gazing almost point-blank at a huge squid. But the story didn't end there, for after seeing the eye of the squid, he walked from one end of the ship to the next and he found that the tentacles reached to the other end, making this kraken about 175 feet long. While it's true that no one else saw this beast in the waters, he clearly believed he did. So did he? Is the kraken still out there? The Loch Ness Monster in terms of legendary monster sightings, there are a few beasts that truly stand the test of time, and one of them can be found in Loch Ness, Scotland. The first official sighting of the creature came in 1933, and ever since that point, the people around the loch, or whoever comes to the loch, try to find it. The monster now known as Nessie is said to be a sea creature of a sort with a large body and a very long neck, which has led many to wonder if it may be some kind of prehistoric creature that has somehow survived the many changes of the world. Obviously, as the sightings of the Loch Ness Monster grew, more and more people came to Scotland to try and find proof of the creature's existence. But as of yet, they haven't found any, and this includes a sonar-deep scan of the entire lake, so it's not as though it wasn't a thorough search. People and scientists have genuinely tried to find Nessie. Either the creature that did exist in the lake was the last and has since died, or Nessie is truly a hoax. Many people continue to look and think that Nessie is smart enough to know when people are looking for her. Bigfoot Perhaps of all the stories, there is no greater one than all the sightings of Bigfoot that have been reported over the years. For those of you that don't know, the Sasquatch, aka Bigfoot, is an ape-like creature that is actually taller than a human and walks on two legs. They're said to be very powerful and pretty intelligent. The hunt for Bigfoot and its similar counterparts from around the world has spawned many legends, stories, and even TV shows dedicated to finding one, or its species, as some claim. In terms of famous sightings, there are many to choose from. You'll find stories of the creature from Alaska, Canada, the continental United States, and places like Idaho, and many more. And while many sightings are clearly fake, there are many people who swear that they have seen a creature that is not like any on this earth. Others, like the Yeti, have been reported for many years in the Himalayas. Hikers were warned by Sherpas, and in 1951, a British explorer named Eric Shipton took a picture of a gigantic footprint next to his axe while looking for an alternative route up Everest. The legend of the Yeti took off, and since then, sightings and footprints have continued to appear. Some of the Bigfoot reports come from army rangers who were verified to be completely sane. They even wrote books about it to describe their experience with the creature. What's more, some encounters, like one in the Everglades, appear to reveal a subspecies of Bigfoot called the skunk ape. All in all, Bigfoot remains the cryptid that most people see in the woods or other wooded and natural areas. While some argue there is proof, until there's a full-blown Bigfoot brought before the public, sightings are likely all we'll get. Thanks for watching! Have you ever seen any strange creature? Would you like to hear more stories like these? Let me know in the comments below! Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time! Bye!